What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we learned how babies are made, and in this episode, we're going to continue with that. We're going to see how the various characters handle the antimatter bomb that has found its way into the game, which is um, obviously not a very calming presence for our characters here. But before we get into that, I did want to make a brief note, because... I've been commenting on the past couple episodes that I still, just the, the Prisoner's Dilemma and how the characters have been responding to it hasn't really clicked very well. And in response to that, I looked into it a little bit more. Not about, you know, the game itself or anything, but about the Prisoner's Dilemma. Because there was just something that wasn't clicking, that I wasn't able to reconcile the, the rational behavior or this asserted most rational outcome with the situation I found our characters in. And I identified a couple things that... I think express my difficulty with reconciling the two. And the first of which is that I feel like the the values involved matter quite a bit. Obviously, you need to maintain the inequality structure such that if somebody successfully betrays somebody else, that reward is going to be the highest. While there is a lesser but still reward relatively for um, successfully cooperating, but then there is a minimal risk per se if you betray and the other person betrays and... Um, once you maintain that structure, but if you alter the values, it could change somebody's likelihood for choosing one particular option. For example, if somebody successfully betrays one particular person um, in one game and they gain 10 points in this nonary game, that would significantly increase the likelihood that somebody betrays, right? Because that value becomes so much more meaningful in the context of, well, you can then escape through the nine door and don't have to play any more times. So that was one thing. I, I almost consider it similar to comparing probability and expected value, right? Probability is just the likelihood of certain events, but expected value is taking into account what the outcome is for each event in addition to its, its probability, right? It's kind of modifying the probability based on the outcome associated with that particular probability. And I think the values involved in the prisoner's dilemma are kind of resonating with me in a similar way. And um, I think that would throw some hesitancy into my, my decision-making. And then one other big thing is that the prisoner's dilemma assumes that there is no opportunity to punish or reward someone based on their decision in this particular game and that it's not going to affect their reputation going forward. And that's something that's very different about the prisoner's dilemma and our game here. And as I've mentioned multiple times, how somebody votes being associated with them is definitely going to impact how other people vote with them in future Ambidex games. And it's for those reasons that I think I was having a difficult time, I guess, agreeing with the characters that said this situation is basically the prisoner's dilemma. And so it's obviously the most rational decision to do this because I think there are some nuances that differentiate this situation quite a bit from the prisoner's dilemma, even though the structure, the foundation is very similar. And it warrants thus a little bit more thought than I think some of the characters... Uh, have indicated thus far. And so now that my, my monologue is over, I guess I'm curious to see if you guys similarly understand the situation in that manner. And uh, yeah, I was I was just having a tough time with it. So I looked into a little bit and share and wanted to share what I found and, and at least help provide some insight into my own thoughts on the matter. But okay, now that we have that all the way out of the way, now let's continue on. <laughs> just how big of a... Uh, just how big of an explosion are we going to get here? It's pretty simple actually. Just use Einstein's equals MC squared. The mass loss during annihilation will be converted to energy, so... So you would take the total mass of matter and antimatter and multiply by the speed of light squared. That should get you the amount of energy. For example, let's say that it has 350 milligrams of antimatter. That would mean there would also be 350 milligrams of matter, right? So you'd have 700 milligrams total. 
そのすべてが追消滅反応を起こした場合生み出されるエネルギーの値はざっと63兆ジュールに。That means annihilation would produce roughly 63 trillion joules. 63 trillion joules? ちょうど広島に投下された原爆のエネルギーと同じよ。That's about as much energy as the Hiroshima bomb. That's, that's a lot of energy for a very small space for a very small number of people. おい、冗談だろ。What the? You've got to be kidding me. たったの350ミリグラムで広島に匹敵するってのか But there's only 350 milligrams of stuff in there? Yeah, I guess it's、uh, pretty powerful, right? 正確に言うと、半物質と物質を合わせて700ミリグラムだけど。Well, technically it's 700 milligrams since you have the matter and the antimatter. どっちだって同じだろうが That's not the point. Now that I think about it, how do they store the antimatter with the matter without causing annihilation? I like vaguely recall something from physics. Maybe they use like magnets or whatnot. I guess, have we actually been able to, in real life, maintain antimatter that's been created? I feel like it's. I always hear about it being created for a split second and then it immediately obliterates, but it's usually only like a particle or two at a time. Not that we can actually get, you know, a few hundred milligrams of antimatter and keep it stably within our, our matter centered world, right? Obviously, this is not the real world, so I'm not gonna, you know, dwell on the point. But I'm curious, I don't, because I don't really know enough about it. And I wonder if you guys do. But, anyways, that's not the point. We're talking about something that weighs less than a gram being able, being able to a bomb that weighed like 10,000 pounds. Don't get so excited. I think I know what kind of bomb this is. Of course you do, Miss Mysterious Alice. It's probably using anti hydrogen. There should only be about 25 micrograms of material in there. That's less than a thousandth of a gram. So you'd only get about 45 billion joules of energy, right? Wow, this, this crew is pretty good with their mental math. <laughs> What does that mean? About as much explosive power as one ton of TNT. She's quite the,、uh, the bombs expert, Alice is. A ton? A ton? Yes, well,、uh, approximately. <laughs> And how exactly should I not worry about that? Yeah, I feel you on that, Dio. That's enough to blow up a 10 story building. True, but it's a lot less powerful than an atomic bomb. But realistically, there's like a ceiling where it's like anything past that, we're not surviving. And it doesn't really matter if it's atomic bomb, ton of TNT, right? If we're gonna die in the end,、uh, you know, it doesn't make that big of a is, is that much more comforting to know it's only a ton of TNT and not an atomic bomb? <laughs> we don't know how big this place is. If we can get far enough away from the bomb, we might have a chance of survival. That's fair. I'm also realizing I have like no standard, like frame of reference for any of these, even, even jewels, right? Like amount of energy、um, or just bombs, explosions. Obviously, Alice does, and it's helpful that she shares her frame of reference. But if somebody told me, like, oh yeah, that's like 45 billion jewels, I'd have, I'd have no idea what level of explosion or energy release that would be. Yeah, it's because you. Well, I guess now I'll know, but. <laughs> Anyways, K says perhaps, but. How do we know this is the only bomb? What do you mean? Look at it carefully. It's got a number three. Do you see it? Yeah, you're right. If the bombs are numbered, then there could be a number two bomb or a number one bomb out there, huh? Or a number four bomb. Yes. 
There's no way to know if this is the final bomb either. There could be a fourth or a fifth or... This reminds me of that prank, right? Where it's like you release three pigs in a building or something and label them one, two, and four. And, you know, drive people crazy looking for number three that doesn't exist. Everybody seems quite disparaged by the news of this bomb. And potentially multiple bombs. Anyway, we can't just sit here and do nothing. We should move it somewhere. I don't know if I'd want to move it at all. Do you step forward and reach for the bomb? No! Don't touch it! Yeah, I'd imagine if, if there's like antimatter in there, right? All it needs to do is make contact with man matter and you've got your kaboom, right? So, any sort of misstep with handling it I'm, could potentially be fatal, right? Alice grabbed Dio by the wrist and jerked him away from the bed. What the heck do you think you're doing? Do you, have you got a death wish or something? This bomb is here because somebody planted it. Do you really think they didn't rig it to go off if some idiot tried to move it? Yeah, given how well the, you know, the bracelets are rigged, it's a very fair point. Well, then what are we supposed to do? We'll just have to leave it be for now. Not until we can find the detonator or figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> then you're telling us we should just prance off and ignore that incredibly deadly bomb that is probably going to kill us all? There's not much else we can do. How do you know how to turn it off? It's a good question. Well, there is a way. Then spill the beans, lady. How do we turn the darn thing off? There should be an emergency deactivation password. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. Sounds about right. So we just need to get this password. Yes, that's right. But there's no keyboard or anything on the bomb. Look again. Is it voice activated, maybe? You see it? Right here. There's a port. Oh. Gotcha. If we can find the password input device, we can just connect it here. So we not only have to find this password, we have to find a device to actually connect to the bomb to input that password. Then we can enter the password. Who would do something like this? I have no idea. But we can figure out when they did it. Oh yeah? When you and I searched this room, we didn't find anything, right? So that means the bomb must have been planted after we left. After we left, huh? But when we went and checked the chromatic doors, we were all there. Hey guys, can I, can I get a little pat on the back? I said chromatic instead of monochromatic. <laughs> I feel like that's, that's gonna be a running thing. And after that, we've all been around other people. There's no way anyone could have snuck off to plant it. I don't know about that. After we finished the AB game, we all split up. But if someone planted it right before then... What do you mean? Oh, yeah. You don't know, do you? Wait, whoa. What don't we know? Before we went off to the three rooms, we searched the hallway. Oh. Everybody was all split up. Great. <laughs> Great. I know in the last episode, I think I walked through the possibility of like, when could somebody really have broken off alone? Here's my answer. Hmm. Yeah. 
Anyone could have come by here then. It would have been easy to sneak away. You know, I don't remember seeing you around, Sigma. What were you doing? Huh, well, I was, uh, I was just kind of deep in thought, I guess. I stayed behind in the warehouse when you guys went off. That's awfully sus. <laughs> Obviously, we know exactly what Sigma was up to, but I'm not sure everybody's going to buy it. Whenever they do this, where they show like every single character screen and they just do the text of dot 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 and then force you to click to move past the next one, it reminds me in like anime where they show, maybe there's like a group of like six or seven characters or nine idols in one anime that I watch, uh, and they want to have them all laugh so they'll do like a little close in shot of each of them and they'll all go do a little <laughs> and then like they just go around the circle and it's so awkward. Hey, why do you guys give me that look? You don't think I planted it, do you? I never said that. Not out loud, you didn't. It's all in your eyes, Alice. Because we're looking at them. You've got to be kidding me. I don't know anything about this bomb. Really? Are you sure? Back when we were in the AB room, you said you saw the moment when the bomb exploded. Th that was, um, just, uh, oof, this is getting really awkward for Sigma here. I could hardly say premonition. If they didn't think it was the worst lie on the planet, they'd think I was insane. Here we go with the dot dot dots, <laughs> the ellipses. Wait, 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 wait. This doesn't make any sense. According to Temuoji, any one of us could have been in here. Why am I the only one who's under suspicion? Also, also, there's no way to know the culprit here is actually one of us. Maybe there's someone else in here. And they set up the... Impossible. Why? There's no way that would get past zero. I don't know if that's an effective argument because you could just say that zero planted the bomb. And there's no way zero would let anybody do something that would get in the way of the game going forward. Um. What? When you say zero, you mean the AI, right? Of course. This is confusing. <laughs> From now on, let's refer to the real zero, the one behind all this, as Zero Senior. Which would, of course, make the AI Zero Junior. Okay. Fine with me. Anyway. Whichever one it is, they're not going to let a tenth person in. There's just no way. What if the tenth person is Zero Senior? I don't think it could be. Why not? Well, Zero Junior said so. He said that the real Zero was one of us. Did, did he say that exactly, or did he just suggest that it was a possibility? I don't remember. Fi and Clover were right. There couldn't be a tenth guest. And Zero Senior was, without a doubt, one of us. Alright, I mean, I guess I'll take the game's word for it at this point. <laughs> but if that was the case, then could Zero Senior have planted the bomb? If not, then who had? Alice? Dio? Luna? Kay? Clover? Temyoji? Fi? Or... It seemed insane, but could it have been Quark? No. 
Why would Zero Senior have gone to all the trouble of setting a bomb? To make this game more exciting? To make it seem more dangerous? No. Probably to breed some degree of distrust between everyone. It didn't fit at all. But if that was the case, then the person who planted the bomb was someone other than Zero Senior. Mi uh, oh no! This is bad! What is it? Press the buttons on your bracelet! Oh, we've only got four minutes? Oh man. <laughs> is this for real? We've only got four minutes until the chromatic doors open. Let's go then. You're right. This bomb thing is gonna have to wait until later. Alright, come on everybody. So off we go. Sprint, sprint, sprint. I mean, Sigma looks pretty jacked, so I don't doubt that we'll get there pretty quickly. <laughs> The real question is going to be, which door do we go through by teaming up with who, right? I'll take this moment to say thank you to those of you that listened to my little monologue at the beginning of the episode, and thank you to those of you who didn't want to listen to it but were patient enough to not get furious with me for it. There's actually one more thing that came to mind that um, I forgot to talk about, and that's that the environment the other players you're potentially playing this game with, if you have some inclination as the likely strategy they'll make, that would influence my decision as well. For example, if you know you're in a situation where a vast majority of people are likely to pick Betray, the Betray option itself becomes much more advantageous. Whereas if you know you're in a situation where most people are likely to choose Ally, that still makes Betray, to a certain extent, um, from a selfish standpoint, more uh, advantageous. But it makes Ally a much more similarly, even if still somewhat inferior, uh, viable option. But anyways, chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. The doors have opened! We need to figure out who's going where, and fast. Um, so our options this time are, uh... <laughs> we don't have time for you to, to wait for you to figure it out. Just pay attention. I'm only going to say this once. If I laid out our options. Option A. Luna and I, yellow, pair up with Clover, Cyan, to open the green door. Okay. Oh, interesting. So this is this is actually really helpful to me. I'm not super comfortable or, or knowledgeable about colors and stuff, so I didn't even realize that combining secondary colors would lead you to the the primary colors again. I thought it was really only a matter of combining the two two primary colors to get those secondary colors. I didn't realize it was a um, sort of like reversible process. But anyways, Temyoji and Dio Magenta pair up with. Alice, yellow to open the red door. K and Quark in Cyan pair up with Phi, magenta, to open the blue door. Okay, option B. Luna and I pair up with Phi to open the red door. Ooh. That would be... that would be tough. <laughs> that would be tough. Just because... Oh, can I look at the dialogue from before? Log, lovely. So we're gonna we're gonna scroll up because I want to take a look at this again. We could pair up with Clover. I I'm inclined to think Clover would be somebody likely to pick Betray. And same in option B, right? That would be somebody else who's likely to pick Betray. But anyways, Temyoji and Dio in Magenta would pair up with Clover, and K and Quark pair up with Alice. If I recall correctly, Quark. We, I don't really know about his personality much. But he was in a Betray room, whereas K was... or whereas Quark was not. Alice obviously chose to Betray, but... And then we have option C. This is where Luna and I pair up with Alice again to open the blue door. Hmm... I don't want to pair up with Alice! <laughs> She's lost my trust, guys. 
But I wonder if we were to pair up with her again, if we could convince her that, hey, we're going to choose Ally again. Right? So I know from reading up on Prisoner's Dilemma, there are a few different strategies, and some of them are more successful than others, depending on a few of those things I mentioned earlier. Um, but one of them is generally a nice strategy with some degree of forgiveness, right? That then encourages uh, sort of ally behavior going forward. And that's definitely what I would lean towards, just as my person, but... So we're basically choosing to team up with Phi or Alice, right? Or Clover. I'm sure I could be and probably should be paying attention to the other combinations and seeing how they work. I guess part of it is... I mean, if I pair up with Alice as well, I'm really only changing one of the three people I you know, spend all of my time with, and that would probably be best for seeing how things differ from our first situation, our first chromatic door to this one, but... Hmm... Do I want to put Temyoji and Dio with Phi? Do I want to put K and Quark with Clover? Hmm... I think... Oh man, this is tough. Three minutes remain until chromatic doors close. Okay, how are we going to do this? We need a system here and we'll never have time to argue it out. Why don't we let the people who are at the most disadvantage right now decide? The most what? The people who only have one BP. Oh, so that would be me, you, and Tamyoji. No way, I refuse. Of course you do, Alice. You're such a problem. <laughs> well, then what would you suggest? We'll be fair and take a vote. A vote? So we all just, like, raise our hands for the option we want? Exactly. So which one do you want, Alice? Option C, I want to go with Sigma and Luna. That sounds so devious. I don't like it. It's like she wants to be with, with me and Luna, knowing we're easy ally choosers. And as a result, you know, we're an easy betrayal for her to win in the end. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it, right? <laughs> Tough. Pick something else. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel you on that, Sigma. I almost want to do that just to test how she would go in a second round. But, and to see maybe if we could convince her to ally. But when she's just on the cusp of successfully betraying somebody to get to nine points, I can't say I really want to do that. <laughs> My my, looks like you're not so fond of me anymore. You're just getting the message, Alice? Do you agree with him, Luna? I'll just let Sigma decide. Fine. I'd like option C, too. K would like option C. Interesting. I'm almost like channeling my inner Among Us player to see why would K prefer option C, right? Pairing up with Clover and Quark. Okay, that makes sense to pair up with Clover against somebody you can trust. Although, they chose Betray. That's kind of odd. Unless K is going to convince Clover to choose Ally, and it seems like Quark had chosen Ally before. Or at least strongly influenced the decision for Quark and Dio to pick ally before, so I think K is actually banking on, even though they chose Betray last time, because of their partnership prior, they can maybe convince her to choose ally, and that way they could, you know, succeed there. Interesting. I hope you guys don't mind, well, actually, I mean, this is how I like to play the game, I like to think through it all, and, um, 
<laughs> this is so funny. I just like spent a good minute trying to analyze why Kay would do it, and then Kay outright says, Clover and I were a pair for the first round, so I feel that I can trust her. <laughs> what about you, Quark? That's fine with me. <laughs> so that's three votes for option C, counting mine. How about the rest of you? This is why voting order matters, right? Because now we know we can't pick option C if we, well, really don't want to Phi would like to pair up with Sigma and Luna too. Interesting. That's very interesting. That would be another way of sort of controlling, right? We have two of the same trio and then just change one character. So, option B then. I'd like to go with Phi. Would you, Sigma? You good with that, Luna? Uh, hi. Um, sure. <laughs> great. <laughs> great. Just great. First of all, I didn't, I didn't realize I wouldn't actually have a choice. I'm still glad I went through the thought exercise, or still am going through the thought exercise of, you know, how to go about it, but I don't really mind. Then we got three votes for option B. Of course, I'd like to go with option A. You want to pair up with Alice? <laughs> Can't really recommend it, Dio. Can't really recommend it. You're a strange duck. Hmm. How about you, Temyoji? Oh no, we're just gonna have a three-way tie now. I don't mind going with option A. Temyoji doesn't mind going with option A. Huh. So this last vote is gonna determine everything. Right? Yeah. So it's all, I think, is it Clover's vote? So two votes for A and three votes for B and C. If Clover's vote doesn't decide this thing, we're gonna have to figure something else out. Which one do you want, Clover? I, um... No! <laughs> Clover! I wanna go with option C. What? What? No, Clover, how could you do this to me? All the characters from the first game are right off the bat losing so much respect from me. So option C, Clover is going to be with K and Quark. All right, it's, it's admittedly not an unreasonable, it, it's a pretty reasonable choice for Clover. Oh, so I can't fault her for choosing C, but God, we're gonna be stuck with Alice again. Quark chose ally in the first round, and I was with Kay in the first round. Then that's what we're doing. Option C had won four votes. We were almost out of time, and I didn't exactly have a convincing argument. I was going to have to go with the majority. Ten seconds remain until chromatic doors close. The doors are closing. Let's go. Come on, Luna, hurry up. We've got to get to the blue door. Right. Oh. <laughs> really? I'm surprised I didn't get to choose. But anyways, that was an interesting thought experiment. And just kind of analyzing, right? How are other people choosing which options they prefer? Are they selecting specific people based on their voting preferences or based on their allies in the past? And just kind of trying to keep track of it, right? Because there is a potential traitor amongst us and and I'll need to do this analysis at some point, or I'd like to, I'd, I'd rather do that than be spoon fed an answer. But anyways, Luna, Alice and I dashed toward the blue door. I looked over my shoulder in time to see the others disappearing into their doors. Clover, Quark, and K had ended up with the red door. So Clover, Quark, and K, and then Phi, Dio, and Temyoji had gone to the green door. Part of what's interesting is Phi wanted to be with us. I would actually think that despite her adamancy... Adamance? Adamancy? Hmm. What's the, what's the noun version of adamant? <laughs> adamance, I think, I feel like it should be, but... Uh, about betrayal during our first AB room, I get the impression she wanted to work with me and Luna 
because we'd be likely to choose ally and she would also choose ally in that situation. I don't think she would choose betray. Well, nah, it would be tempting, but would she really kill us? <laughs> for, you know, for lack of a better word. I guess Luna has some points to spare, but we don't. I'd be more inclined to think Fi would pick Ally over Alice, that's for sure. But anyways, um, she's with Dio and Tenmyoji. I think Tenmyoji is going to lean towards Ally, but Dio not so much, so that'll be interesting to see. Chromatic door is closing. Also, thank you, Siggy, for your extensive comments in general, but you mentioned that um, chromatic doors versus colored doors. I think the, the voice acting in English as well says colored doors, but in the Japanese they also say colored doors. So I don't know why the, the text is chromatic doors, not that I particularly care, but just an interesting thing, I guess. Wow, that's a big map. Wow, that's a big map. All right, so what room did we end up in? Huh? There are three doors here. It looks like they're all locked, though. Does that mean this is just a dead end? Well, there's a weird lever thing over here. Try pulling it. How about you try pulling it? Hey, what's with all this hostility? Do you really not get it, Alice? Do you really not? Are you still mad about the last AB game? You know, the one where you brought me so close to my death? Yeah, just, just a little bit upset. Of course I am. P please don't fight. Yeah, classic. You know, Luna coming in, swooping in, being all... Okay, come on, guys, let's calm down. We need to work together or we're really going to be in trouble. Please? Ugh. Very well. I'll pull a lever then. Is that okay? I'm, I'm actually curious to see... Would we always be shoehorned into this option with Alice? Probably not. I think this is the... This is a consequence of us choosing Alice the very first time around, but I'd imagine this second round will also be different if we choose somebody different during our first round. Yeah, go right ahead. See if I care. Oh, it actually opened. What? That's a surprise. One of the doors opened. But only one. I wonder how you open the others. Who cares? We should get moving. I think it said garden? Bee garden? Whoa. Look at this place. It's actually a really nice environment. What is this place? Also, I love this music. Don't tell me we somehow managed to get outside. I doubt it. Look up. There's a ceiling up there. Yeah, I remember the door said bee garden or something. What's a bee garden? It probably stands for something. Maybe beautiful garden? Maybe... Uh, probably like botanic garden? Huh. This feels like a whole other little world. Like an oasis in the middle of all this metal. I feel kind of weird saying this considering where we are, but... This place feels so liberating. All this green, it's its wonderful. That's true. Seeing a lot of greenery really does have that effect. I'm not somebody who has a lot of act, you know, active outdoor hobbies, admittedly, but when I do go out for a walk or you know, you take my dog for a walk, etc., it is really nice when you get to see the trees and when they're changing colors, but especially when everything is green and lush, it's, uh, I don't know, it's uplifting. It's huge, though. We'll wear ourselves ragged trying to search the whole thing. 
This must be the exit. Naturally, it's locked. <laughs> Darn, well, so much for this being easy. It's locked. We should split up and look around. Agreed. Well, let's get to it then. It's time to seek a way out! Da -da. <laughs> it's exciting each time. So here we are. We are finally at... Oh, I think there's something here, but I can't really tell. I was just trying to scroll around. There we go. Okay. So we're finally at another escape room. It's very exciting. I'm actually, however, going to say that we'll try to solve this puzzle in the next episode. I know this will be a little bit of a shorter episode. Uh, maybe... A lot of talking, a lot of me sharing my thoughts. Some of you may like that, some of you may not. I appreciate your patience if you don't. If you do like it, please share your comments on my thoughts. I like having somewhat of a discussion about these sorts of things. And if you want to have a more real-time talk about it, uh, feel free to hop in Discord and share those thoughts because it's a little bit easier to talk about it that way. Um, but yeah, this was, this was a fun one. Really thinking through the different options, right? How would we think... How, who should we choose? And really demonstrating some of the consequences of that first A-B game, right? It, that didn't happen in a vacuum. It's not like it's not going to have consequences on future A-B games. The fact that I'm thinking so hard about it and I'm less inclined to work with certain people knowing that they'll be my opponents for the A-B game, for the A-B game, that's an indicator that, well, it's not exactly the, the prisoner's dilemma. It's a little bit even more complicated, maybe. And... I'm excited to try to figure out how not just I'll navigate that situation, but how all of the other characters will, right? And and then trying to read into each of their own motivations and how they're making their own decision-making process. It's been it's been a very cool episode, despite what is arguably arguably little story progress due to my just voicing all of my thoughts. So again, I appreciate you guys' patience, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. But. Anyways, until the next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.